Today we're going to do the fourth part in our insect control series. You know, we have showed you a lot of products. I hope that hasn't gotten too confusing, that you can keep it straight. If not, come into the nursery. We'll be happy to talk to you about it. Today we're going to be talking about what to do to protect your trees and shrubs from insects. You know, a, a mature tree is such an investment. It's so much easier to replace something small than it is a mature tree. So you want to do your best to protect that tree from getting insects. Because once it has insects, it's so hard to fix it and return it to a healthy state. It's much better to prevent it in the first place. And if you get um, insects like boars, it's boars we're mostly talking about. In, in one tree in your yard, every tree is at risk if your neighbors has them. But you know what? If you have trees that you really like, that you want to keep healthy, just go ahead and treat them every year and save yourself the trouble of having to try and fix a problem after you've got it. Now, in our area, um, there are certain trees that are really prone to borers. There's um, willows, cottonwoods, um, aspen, and sometimes ash trees will all get bores and so those are the ones you really want to concentrate on protecting. Let, I was going to show you the product but let me tell you something first. There are certain things that predispose your tree to getting bores. The first one is drought. You know, you have to water your tree much more than you think it needs. They cannot be sprinkled. Trees that have a shallow root system because it's the sprinkling system that's watering are particularly at risk for getting bores because getting adequate moisture helps that tree to defend against bores so that when they bore in they've got enough sap it will actually drown the bore. So if they aren't getting enough water they will be more likely to get um, bores. So how do you water well enough? You, you know, a watering ring is a really good thing. Even better is a slow trickle from a hose. And you need to water for five minutes for every foot in height of that tree twice a week. So like if you have a 30 foot tree, that's 150 minutes. That's two and a half hours twice a week, a slow trickle with a hose. So you see they are going to need a lot of water. It's got to soak way down in there. And also in the winter, you've got to keep them wet. You have to water until there's snow on the ground, especially if it's a newly planted tree, if it's only just a couple of years old, you've got to keep it wet. Another thing that predisposes them for a bore attack is um, mechanical injury, like you ran into it with your lawnmower, or somebody ran their bicycle or their tricycle into it, or you hit it with the weed whacker. Those kinds of things open up a way for the bores to get in there. Okay. Um, uh, let me show you this product now. This is, this is a product we've showed you lots of times. It's so so good for so many things but when you get bores or when you're trying to prevent bores this is the thing you want to use and you need to use it first thing in the spring or in the fall first thing in the spring the saps rising it takes it into the tree very quickly last thing in the fall it'll have it in there by the time the insects are active in the spring and the egg hatching and the flying stage of the tree borer is where you've got to catch them. See the, the insect comes along in the summer and it hits the bark, it lays its eggs on the bark. It's a beetle that actually does this. It lays its eggs on the bark. Then those eggs hatch, they bore into the tree. Once they get deep into the tree, there's very little you can do about it. So you have to have the tree protected for when they go in or when the larvae have, have become adults and sometimes this takes two to three years. When they become adults and they come back out, you can catch them then. You don't want them to ever get um, out into your yard as adult beetles because they're laying their eggs all over everywhere. You got to take care of them while they're there at the tree. One thing that helps prevent, besides using tree and shrub, is to put mulch under your trees. Instead of letting the grass grow up, put a nice big ring of mulch around and that stops the beetles from coming uh, quite a bit. Now. Um, if you have edible trees that are getting bores in it, like the peach bore, apple trees, you know, and it's not just bores that you might get, you might get aphids or other kinds of insects, you can use this product. It's very similar to the tree and shrub, but a little different. It doesn't work as well on shade trees and things like that, but for edible things, it's really great. Same thing once a year and you're protected. You just as well do it and have your trees be safe. 
You know, you can use that on uh, grapes, on on all kinds of fruit trees, on berry bushes, and anything like that. It works really, really good. This is Volk oil or horticultural oil. It's a it's an oil that you use when the tree has no leaves on it. So last thing in the fall, first thing in the spring, you spray this on and it kills a great many insects that like to hide in the bark. And they just waiting for warm weather to come out and start eating everything. So use this and it helps get rid of those. Now also on your fruit trees, a lot of times you know you, the moths come along, they lay their eggs on the, on the fruit, they go in, you go to eat your fruit, it's full of worms. What are you going to do about that? Well there are several products that work pretty good. Seven has been around for a long time. You can spray seven real regularly and it will keep the worms out of your fruit. The thing that about seven is, seven got its name because it only lasts for seven days. It has a real low re residual rate. That's what makes it safe to use on edibles, but it doesn't last very long. So you have to spray every 10 to 14 days at the most with this to make sure your tree is protected. Same with malathion. Same thing. Low residual rate. Very effective, but you have to apply it very often. Be sure to wait till after the blossoms have dropped off your tree or you'll be killing the bees. You don't want to do that or you won't get any fruit at all. This fruit tree spray by Bonide is a combination of seven and malathion and really, really works good. But you still have to spray on a regular basis every two weeks or so, like the first and the fifteenth of the month, to keep those insects out of your fruit. If in your trees and shrubs you should happen to get spider mites, oh they're so hard to kill. This product will really kill them. It's really the only thing that we know of that really takes care of spider mites. You can tell if you have spider mites like in your spruce trees, in your in your uh, other kinds of trees, sometimes in your shrubs because it gets kind of a, a webby looking thing over the leaves and you can't really see the insects. It looks like a spider came and spent the night and then went away. But that's not really what it is. Get a piece of paper and hold it underneath underneath the branch tap the branch. If you see a bunch of little spots on your paper and they're starting to move, you've got spider mites. And believe me, you've got trouble. You don't want that to happen, but this product, if you spray that on there, kills them on contact and then the tree or the shrub takes it into them and then it's a systemic killer as well and kills for the rest of the season. Works really great. I hope this has helped you to know what to do to prevent insects from attacking your trees. You don't want to lose a tree. They're a big investment and a real pleasure for your family. So protect them the best way that you can by using these products and make sure that you feed your trees so that they're strong and healthy and that you water them slow and deep twice a week.